Hi, my name is Max. I make weird games and bad videos, and today I've got one of each for you. Specifically, this video is about my tabletop game, The Lassophobia. The Lassophobia is a noir Lovecraftian mystery story where a muckraker, a doctor, a mobster, and a PI are working together to pursue a strange suited figure through rain slick streets where danger lurks around every corner. Now, I know what you might be thinking. I'm hardly the first person to make something that's a mix between noir and Lovecraft. There's uh, been a lot of those, actually. So instead of boring you with a super in-depth explanation of all my rules, I'm going to cut right to the chase and just tell you the four reasons why my game is unusual and experimental and hope you like it. Then, if any of this seems appealing to you, well, the game is free to download and play on my website. You can find a link in the description. Alright, so reason number one. The GM is a horrible monster that the players need to kill. W well... Yeah, that's normal, I guess, but uh, this time they are in-universe as well. Not only does the GM guide players through the experience, here they also take on the role of the main antagonist, an otherworldly and condescending monster called the Suit. This game is an asymmetrical multiplayer game where the lone GM is challenged by the four players that make up the party. While the Suit doesn't ever attack the party directly, they can gain the upper hand via old-fashioned trickery, as well as encounters made up of different effects and monsters that they create. The GM creates these fights by rolling dice, writing down the sum total of the dice, and then summoning monsters slash effects from the monster manual. Each monster slash effect has a specific cost, which means that encounters are balanced and highly customizable. Also, the closer the party gets to catching the suit, the more summoning dice the GM rolls, which gives the game a natural difficulty curve. That being said, uh, the fights are made easier by the fact that players are able to team up together and protect each other. However, uh, players can only defend one person per turn, including themselves, which means if you protect a teammate, it may come back to bite you if no one will do the same for you. Though, to be honest, if the players keep their wits about themselves and work as a team, the game isn't that hard. In fact, you could take this whole game as a shining, optimistic example that if humanity bands together, well, then there's nothing that can't be accomplished. Which brings me nicely to reason number two. There's traitors among us and we can't get along because people are garbage. If you've ever played a tabletop game before, then you'll know that there's always at least one guy who always throws a monkey wrench into everyone's plans. Well, at the start of this game, each player is given the chance to anonymously betray humanity and secretly join the suit. Now everybody can be that guy. Let's just put our down on the desk. For so, right now, if there's any of you here who want to betray the rest of the party and the players and turn against humanity, please raise your hand. Also, a provocative line from the suit can work wonders here. Really? Alright. Alright, please lower your hand. See? All I had to do was ask a question and someone else chose to betray the party. I've also had games where no players betrayed each other, but because the GM made an offhand comment like, uh, oh, you're leaving them all alone, huh? Everyone thought that everyone except them was the traitor, and then they all turned on each other again. These seeds of distrust eventually led to the players fighting and killing each other instead of the GM. Most of the time, a single sentence said at the right time with the right intonation is all it takes to tear a group of friends apart. Anywho, I'm sure you're curious about what being a traitor entails. Well, there's the obvious stuff like not participating in team-ups, uh, hogging the items, lying about dice roll results, yada yada yada, but there's also a much more important role that the traitor plays. I'll save that for the end though. After all, the game's all about mystery and suspense, so I think it's only fitting that I keep you waiting a little longer. In the meantime, reason number three, the importance of language and what it means to be human. You see, to me, language and the ability to communicate with each other is a big part of what makes us human. So, since in this game the villain is trying to strip the party of their humanity, naturally, they do so by taking away their language. One of my favorite actions as the suit is to forcibly take away a letter for an encounter. Yes, you can literally restrict what they can say to each other. In this particular game, I took away the letter E. Every time someone spoke a sentence that included the letter E, they were punished by losing some of their sanity, which is the name of the resource that players spend to use their skills. Please enjoy some choice clips here. Are you watching Andrew Huang? Who was I watching? Who? Who was I watching? Please scrape off to sanity. Oh, shit. First ability in my list. So, how much damage did you do? We made like the year that my class did that, or my class did that. 
class. We all went a really simple route because we didn't have a lot of time to make projects. This so, many? <laughs> yes, I mean, you didn't get tripped up there. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Do I got tank, small tank, rope, smash glass. The glass is gone. You ask you about your fire extinguisher. Uh, Max, with this law, my sanity is actually slipping away. <laughs> Uh, was a thinker. <laughs> was a thinker? <laughs> you might have noticed, even when they didn't use words that contained the letter E, they still had a hard time communicating with each other. This might have been due to the fact that they all sounded like Neanderthals. That's because language is important to who we are, and that's why my players would always tell me that they felt less human when it was taken away. Thematically, it's what separates the players from the people who were turned into monsters by the suit. Although the players can choose to sacrifice their own letters to be able to use more skills, I'd never recommend it because it just brings you closer to being like the horrors they're trying so hard to beat. You see, among all the monsters, only the suit is capable of speech, and the reason why is because it literally took the voices of those it turned. The GM can try to trick the players with creatures that look human, but since they're all incapable of speech, as long as the player keeps the importance of language in mind, they'll never fall into the suit's trap. Which brings me nicely to the fourth reason, the finale and the ultimate betrayal. Here's what the entire game leads up to, the final confrontation with the suit. This can end one of two ways. The first is the good ending with the party easily finishes off the suit since they have no more puppet soldiers to command, and then everyone lives happily ever after. Boring, I hear you cry. How can a Lovecraft story have a happy ending? Where's the twist? Where's the drama? Well, I'll tell you where it is. It's in those envelopes that have been sitting in front of the players this whole game. You see, prior to starting the game, I cut up a page from the manual and put the different pieces into labeled envelopes. Then I pass them out to players depending on which character they picked. The entire game, players are just fiddling with the envelope and wondering, wondering what its purpose is, which always just adds to the game's suspense and mystery. There's a chapter in the instruction manual titled Losing Your Mind that doesn't tell players what happens when they lose all their sanity, but it implies that it isn't good. As it turns out, if a player either loses all of their sanity or makes it to the end of the game as an undiscovered traitor, then they open their envelope and read the contents aloud. Inside the envelope is a description of their character grotesquely transforming into a monster that then turns on the human members and becomes the final boss of the game. This final reveal, this final betrayal, also results in a huge surge of emotion from the players as they realize what is happening. And now, my chosen traders, please open your envelopes and read it aloud. Wait. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Even in a case like this, where two players were traitors and another one was turned, the lone player who faced hopeless odds didn't feel cheated or unsatisfied. People might feel a little betrayed by their friends, but the ending is always a highlight to the game. And to be honest, even though I made fun of the other ending earlier, I'm still a fan of it. Even though it's rare that everyone will trust one another, and even rarer when that trust is rewarded, it's nice to see that, on the rare occasion, people can work together towards a common goal, even if it's just in a game. It can be depressing or hopeful. It can be creepy or funny. The ending can be triumphant or horrific. And sure, the GM is pushing the game towards a darker tone, but in the end, it's up to the players and what they choose. And to me, the fact that everything in a game can be a two-way street between a developer who wants to tell a story and players who want to experience it, well, that's what makes games so beautiful. Hey, thanks for listening to me ramble for so long. I hope you got something out of it, and I'd love it if you considered trying the game for yourself. Link's in the description if you're interested. Anyways, that's all for now, and I'll be back with another video eventually. See you later. Is the microphone on? Mm.